Okay, so let's think about the model of a atom. So you know that our basic model of an atom is that we have a nucleus, a positively charged nucleus. And then we have electrons. Let's think about an atom with just one electron. And the basic model is that the electron is orbiting the nucleus. And in fact, we could think of this almost like a little solar system. It's as if the nucleus is like the sun and the electron is like a planet that's orbiting around it. Uh, so originally, people thought of the atom uh, kind of in this form as a solar system model. All right, now, in the solar system, theoretically, a planet can be at any distance from the sun. As long as it's going at the right speed, a planet can be at any distance from the sun. There's no distance that's forbidden to a planet. As long as it's going at the right speed, it can be at any distance from the sun, which means that basically planets can have any energy of motion. They can be at any uh, distance from the sun at any energy. Um, however, it turns out that, uh, as is the theme for uh, what we're talking about today, the energy levels and the radii of electrons in the nucleus are quantized. That is, the electron cannot take on any possible orbit. There's only certain orbits that are allowed to an electron. It's as if there was only certain orbits that are allowed to um, in a, a planet. Or to give another example, uh, we put up satellites around the Earth, right? And we can put a satellite up at basically any height above the Earth. As long as we set it at going at the right speed, we can have the satellite orbiting at any height above the Earth. There's no orbit that's forbidden to us to put in a satellite. So it seems like the satellite orbits are continuous. Satellite orbits around the Earth are continuous. We can basically have any orbit and any energy for the satellite we want. Um, but that's because we're dealing with ordinary sized objects. When we get down to the atomic and subatomic level, things are quantized. And it turns out you cannot take on any possible orbit for an a electron. There's only certain orbits possible. Those are satellite and planets because the their mass is big. That's right. They have, um, they're, they're basically big enough that this quantization doesn't matter. I, I suppose that technically, maybe the orbits of the satellite are quantized, uh, but they're quantized so small that you can't notice. So, for example, it might be that, um, if you see what I'm saying, uh, that it's not really continuous, but the point is, for example, it might be that you could have a satellite that was, uh, say... So you only take on really, like, some decimal, some really, really small numbers that you can't be. Right. Uh, so let's say it can only go in increments of this decimal point here. Say, only in increments of a quintillion. Say. So it can't be, say, half a quintillion. You can't have a satellite that's half a quintillion further than another one. But those increments are so small, no one would ever notice, basically. So yeah, everything is quantized, but you don't really notice it uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at the level of ordinary objects. I, I think that's the right analysis. All right, anyway, is things at the subatomic level are definitely trillion? quantized. What's that? It's quintillion after trillion? Or is it oh, I was just making up numbers, but it's uh, trillions, uh, then trillion? quadrillions, then quintillions. Uh, then sextillions, you just use the Greek prefixes. Uh, Septillions, octillions, nontillions. So yeah, maybe the satellite orbits are quantized as long as they, maybe you can't have an orbit, maybe the orbits have to be, uh, say, one nontillionth of a unit yeah. further from each other. But that's so small, no one could ever notice it, basically. Okay, but the d degree of quantization is very noticeable inside the nucleus, is the key idea. And again, this should strike us as very weird. Again, if I just say, what does, for example, make this uh, chalk holder orbit around my hand, it seems like the possible orbits are continuous. Yeah. I can put it anywhere I want. Uh, but for some strange reason, uh, the, uh, the orbits here are not continuous. In fact, later on we'll kind of see why this is implied by the wave characteristics of the electron. Um, all right. So um, there's only certain levels that are allowed. And the equation is... These are the allowed energy levels. The allowed energy levels here uh, fall into this range. Okay. Um, and n could be one, two, three, four, etc. 
Um, but it's quantized. N can't be 1.5 or 2.5. These are the only possible energies. By the way, this is EV. What, what's EV a unit for? Energy. So these are energy levels. What does capital Z stand for? That's the atomic number. I don't know if you remember seeing that symbol in chemistry. Z for atomic number. What, remember, what does the atomic number tell you, though, about an atom? It tells you... Electrons and protons. Right. Now, technically, it tells you the protons. If the atom is neutral, that would be the electrons. But actually, we're, gonna, we're, we're actually going to be focusing on a lot of ions here. So we cannot assume that these are going to be neutral. So we should not think of Z as the number of electrons. In fact, this equation only works for single electron atoms. I should have emphasized this. This is only for single electron atoms. Uh, this is only for single electron atoms. So we can have any number of protons we want, but we have to have only a single electron. So unless we're talking about hydrogen, we're going to be talking about things with big charges. So Z stands for the number of protons. So use like lithium, but with a charge. That's right. That's right. It would have to be lithium 2 plus, because uh, it would only have one electron, whereas lithium wants to have three electrons. Lithium 2 plus, helium 1. 1 plus. That's right. Those are the only things that this equation would work for. I vaguely remember this from Right. Head. Okay. And then past that, it just gets like really crazy, like predicting it. That's right. That's right. Some of that chemistry stuff, actually, we might actually be getting into in, in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, how, where would you look up, say, the Z for boron? Yeah, it's the atomic number. So you can always look that up. Um, so the way it looks like is like this. Here's n equals one. So let's talk about, say, hydrogen. What would Z be for hydrogen? So what would the first energy level be for hydrogen? Um, negative 13.6. And the units would be? Electron volts. Because this is in electron volts. Good. Is it, is it negative because it's an electron? Or is it, why is Let's it talk about that more in a second. That's a good question. How about when n equals 2? Let's figure out what e would be. Did you remember to square? No. Okay. Negative 3.4 electron volts. Uh, let's do n equals 3. So now you're dividing by 3 squared, which is 9. Let's do one more level. n equals 4. Negative. OK. All right. This is when the electron is closest to the nucleus. And here it's getting further and further away from the nucleus. Notice that, um, are these energy levels getting closer or further from each other? Uh, closer. Yeah, we won't do the rest of them, but you can see the diagram would look approximately like this. The energy levels keep getting closer and closer. Theoretically, you can keep going on forever here. You can plug in n equals 900 or n equals 1,000. In fact, there's applications where you would plug in n equals 900 or 1,000. Um, theoretically, you can go up to n equals infinity. What would the energy be when n equals infinity? Zero. Good. Um, do atoms want high energies or uh, so do things want high energy or low energy? No. Everyone wants to lower their energy. So do things want positive energy or negative energy? Negative. 
Right. So there's nothing paradoxical about having a negative energy. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you have a negative charge, even though electrons do have a negative charge. Anybody who's really happy has a negative energy because they want to have a nice low energy there. Now, where do electrons want to be? Do they want to be close to the nucleus or far? Close. Because the nucleus is positive and they're negative. The electrons like being close to the nucleus. That is the reason why this is the most negative energy down here. 